Uh, Ruby, would you be able to lead us in prayer? Okay, how about Lubega? Let's pray. Yes, yes. Our Father, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning and this day. We, we really thank you for this lecture we are going to have. Lord, we do pray for our lecturer. Let her be used as a vessel to teach, to remind us, and to train us. And Lord, also let us be here to understand as we take the work of the Lord to another level in our generation. We do pray as those brothers and sisters who have not yet been to go. We do pray and believe in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Um, so we will continue with what we were discussing in the last class. We saw how you know, Satan, he has his strategies. He's a defeated enemy. Uh, we already have the victory, but then he does his best to, um, uh, you know, try and, and interfere with God's purpose for our lives. He does his best to, uh, you know, play, we said, mind games. Okay? We Earlier, if you recall, the methods of workings of the devil, the, his schemes and plots, we should not be ignorant about them. And... Uh, many of them have to do primarily with the mind okay so that is one way mind games is something that he is um, so well versed in and he can use that to bring down a believer uh, and so you know when the believer is aware okay this is how he works primarily he works through uh, the mind he tries to interfere with the thought patterns of a believer and then we also, you know, we will talk about open doors, violations and intrusions that he uses to uh, interfere. So when a believer understands these things, uh, we can be prepared. Okay, I'm not going to, you know, when you know that this is how a thief will try to get in. No, he will try to get in from the backyard. Then if so, then what people do? They, they try to have some uh, security system in the backyard or they have a big lock on the, uh, you know, that, that door that opens into the backyard. So preparation. So we are prepared even in our mindset. Okay, this is how the enemy could attack us. So we are well prepared. Uh, and if at all, you know, we are in the attack, we also uh, have what it takes to overcome the attack. So that is how it's important to know all these things. So talking about mind games, again, in the last class, you know, I said that uh, uh, he, he wants to influence and take it to the greatest influence. Uh, so if we allow him, then, you know, we it, just the influence, it goes into oppression and then it goes into, um, you know, the uh, thoughts leading to arguments and uh, reasoning and finally a stronghold. And we know that strongholds in the mind area is where demons can occupy. A stronghold is uh, a fortress. So in the olden times, you would have fortresses where people will dwell. Okay. Um, and soldiers would, would dwell in those fortresses. And that is how the demons use the fortress created in the mines, or in other words, strongholds, to dwell there. And we say, right, that believers are demonized because they have strongholds in their mind. Uh, unless these strongholds are broken, it's difficult to evict these demons. So we said, put on the armor of God, we have to be thoroughly prepared for the attack of the evil one. So parts of the armor of God, you know, we went over different things and we said that, you know, if we can maintain, like if I have to summarize, then uh, the armor is when in our mind we are prepared. Okay, so I understand what is salvation. I understand who I am in Christ Jesus. Then uh, I understand what is the truth, what is righteousness, what are righteous acts. And I go by that. 
know and uh, i don't give any place to sin or the works of sin so uh, you know nothing sinful nothing unrighteous unholy even things that have to do with anxiety fear uh, intimidation you know i i try to stay away from that so then i am preserved from any attack of the en- enemy and even if there is an attack i know how to overcome the enemy so that is the manner in which one needs to uh, protect themselves and don't give the enemy any foothold okay? uh, that is no entrance no entrance and sometimes we see in territorial warfare um that people will go and occupy a land very close to uh, a certain space and before you know it you know from there they will uh, enter right if you remember the story of troy right so um, very close to a, a place uh, the the um, uh, you know the the community is a horse and it's there's nothing wrong with uh, you know this this wonderful good looking horse and um, so what do the people do they take that structure that horse into within their fortress they allow it and they think ha ah, nothing will happen we'll we'll just have this this beautiful horse inside but that's exactly what the enemy does he doesn't he doesn't want you to fully open up everything to him he just wants one entry point so once the horse comes in you know then the re- rest of the story uh, of troy unfolds that there were soldiers within it and they come out they attack they destroy um, you know I, i don't remember the names of the communities but yeah so it's it's the war that happens in the same way when we allow a little bit of the enemy and the beautiful thing is that you know we have the holy spirit dwelling within every believer and the holy spirit is so faithful to do his work of convicting us right of sin righteousness and judgment now when we respond to it well and good we are not we are keeping the doors shut to the devil but when we don't respond to the holy spirit and we continue with our sin that is when the problems start starts uh, it's like giving ground to the devil and uh, that foothold or that opportunity or the power that we give him he can use that to his advantage and you know bring the crack in the entire building so uh mind games in the area of the mind you know be very very firm uh with the word of god so meditating on god's word and that's also something that i emphasized in the last class we can all work on it um and you know it for for it's one of those disciplines that really helps us to maintain a, a strong and a victorious christian life uh, and particularly against the attacks of the devil now other open doors we said other open doors uh, can be sin sin is definitely one nice open door that uh, satan can come in through wrong words um either spoken over us or you know uh, our uh, uh, whomever we have authority over uh, that also will cause um an open door for the enemy to enter through and situations you know sometimes there can be certain situations um that uh, satan will take advantage of uh, maybe some strife situation in the family or some confusion or you know something something like you're going through a a a great time in the ministry and all and that's not the time when you expect uh, you know some uh, attack to land on you but you know maybe those are the times when we are not guarded anymore let's say i went and i preached um i'm not going to uh, explain in detail sin and uh, wrong words we've discussed that thoroughly last time so i'm just coming to situations here in our notes i'm on page 42 um so situations is like even if it's not a certain situation where you know some family member is causing strife or um you know something else confusion in the home and that satan can use against us if not that just in our own journey the highs and the lows can be moments that he can use 
Okay, so uh, I was saying, if the ministry has gone well, or let's say, you know, somebody has gone on a, a mission trip and they've preached so well, they've seen so many people healed, they've seen so many people delivered from demons and miracles have happened, testimony. So it's a high. Okay. So what happens right after a high, generally to us human beings is, we take it easy. We think, ah, okay, now I'm going to rest. I've had great ministry. I'm just going to chill. Okay. So we sometimes also are low on guard, guarding ourselves. Because those moments we make ourselves more vulnerable. And Satan can easily use it. So maybe pride. That's a good thing for him to do. He could he could say, oh, okay, come and put thoughts in our mind so that you know, pride can happen or um, uh, people may come and there can be a lot of flattery and those same people can give us some wrong suggestions and, you know, we, we end up doing something completely, uh, you know, uh, something that we have not thought through well. So there are a lot of, lot of ways in which he can use our unguardedness. And this unguardedness happens when no, we are at peace or we are relaxed or we are very happy. So uh, it can happen during moments of triumph or it can also happen during moments of great grief and trauma. So let's say we've been through a very low phase in our lives. It's easier, isn't it, for Satan to plant thoughts to say, oh, God doesn't love you or um, God has forgotten you. He can use that moment because you are vulnerable and uh, Many a time for believers, those are the moments where they feel, oh, why did this happen? If God was with me, if God's promise was true. Uh, you see, what is happening? They are slowly letting go of faith and slowly Satan is bringing in his thoughts into their minds. So, especially when things go very well for us and when things go quite badly, for us, it's best to be on double guard, you know, over ourselves. Maybe you want to take time out or maybe you want to rest and then spend time in God's word or something like that where um, you are still alert okay, and uh, you can catch the enemy uh, if at all he tries to uh, come in a certain way. So Satan is very happy you know, to get such uh, situations, opportunities. Now, even in, when it comes to, see, I'm talking in terms of an individual, okay, and uh, that person's uh, walk of victory. But think about a church situation. Even in a church situation, Satan is very happy when he sees some cracks. You know, maybe mm, you remember in Act 6, there is a time when... Um, one community starts complaining that another community is not supplying food to the widows. That's a great chance for the devil. Now, if the leaders don't use wisdom to resolve it in a in a you know in a nice way, where both the communities have been considered, Satan can use it to bring division and say, "Ha, huh, you know, the pastor is for that community, or these the elders are for this community. They are not taking care of you. You know, so many things. He's just waiting. Okay, where is the crack? So even when it comes to a church setting, he can use different situations. So, you know, one really needs to walk with God's wisdom. There was one such incident when Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. So in 2 Corinthians 2, he uh, talks about uh, uh, one of the brethren who fell into sin. And, uh, you know, he tells them that, you know, you restore such a one. Um, they had put him away because of the sin. But later... Uh, Paul tells them, you please re reaffirm your love to him. So this is, I'll, I'll tell you, 2 Corinthians 2, verses 8 through 11. So I'll read the full passage. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love to him. For to this end, I also wrote that I might put you to the test, whether you are obedient in all things. Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. And for if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one 
for your sakes in the presence of Christ. So verse 11, he says, lest Satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his schemes. So, you know, Paul recognizes, okay, so there is an incident of a brother being restored. Now, if that brother is upset and, uh, you know, if, you know, he carries bitterness against the leaders, mm, uh, so many things can happen, isn't it? And that could bring about an issue in the church. So he is trying to um, speak wisdom into their lives and saying, okay, in correcting this person, so far we have, you know, dealt, um, we, we have spoken the right things, uh, you know, for him, we have given him time, all that. Now it is our time to reaffirm our love to him. It shouldn't become like a, a war between us and this person. So employing wisdom, particularly in the church setting, you know, we have to pick up, okay, is there some kind of bitterness that is cropping up? Is there some kind of anger? Is there something, anything, any situation? Because Satan loves it. If he can have one or two of those situations, then he brings in commotion. Very strategically, he will tend to do that. So whether it is in our personal lives or in the church setting, um, keep the door shut to the devil. Okay. So what, what open doors to the devil? We said that sin can open door, wrong words can open doors, and certain situations that we don't deal with, they can also open the door for the devil. Now, the third manner in which you know, the, the devil would like to attack uh, believers is, we are calling it violations and intrusions. Okay, violation and intrusions. Briefly, I had mentioned this sometime back. I don't know if you remember. So if my home has a protective wall around it and uh, the people who are permitted to enter can only enter through the gate, then, uh, you know, that's how the good people would do it. But what will a thief do? The work of the thief is jump over the wall. Okay. or enter from the back gate as a uh, back door gate, whatever, <laughs> as Jesus says. So what's happening? You know, this is intrusion. Legally, Satan is not supposed to do this. This does not belong to him. But here he is. Okay. Entering, violating, Right? Violating is, again, uh, you know, violation is uh, wrongfully doing something. Okay, that's not his his part to do it. But here he is you know, meddling with things that he should not be meddling with. It's a violation of the rule, violation of the law. Uh, so Satan tries to do this in the lives of believers. So there can be times that we are wondering, okay, I am a believer. I'm a tither, you know, I give, I am wise with my, my finances, I'm a good steward, you know, I don't waste money, I save money, all that, okay, everything is fine. But in the area of finances, you see that Satan is trying to do something, okay, something happens, some big loss happens, and then you're like, what is this? How can he do this? And so then we, we you know, it could be any any one of these things, whatever we listed out so far, Satan is trying to uh, attack us in that way. He could uh, have an open door. So then what should I do as a believer? I should shut that door. Maybe sin or, uh, you know, something that I said, uh, my wrong confessions, uh, you know, or a situation that he had created. So then I try to uh, fix that. Or it could simply be that, yeah, there is no open door, but he is trying to violate. He has broken the rule. He has broken the law. He has broken the, you know, because we are in the kingdom of light and we are in the kingdom of God, the blessings of Abraham apply to us. You know, the, the power of the cross applies to us. The healing um, you know, that God has promised as our covenant God applies to us. His deliverance applies to us. His provision applies to us. So legally or lawfully, these are the things that belong to us. Now, what does Satan do? 
violation intrusion he'll try to bring a sickness he'll try to bring you know problem in the finances he'll try to bring you know, problem in the family he'll try to do all these things which he is not supposed to do so then in those moments if we have understood yeah there is no open door so this is an intrusion okay or this is a violation what do you do basically you take your stand and you say no devil i will not let you do this okay or you know a child whom you brought up in the ways of the lord and now the child is uh influenced you know more influenced by by uh let's say you know some some friends who are leading the child into wrong habits and things like that you can say no devil you can't and then you have to take your uh, authority and begin to enforce victory when you find that the devil is trying to violate or intrude into any given area of our life so as a believer we can't just uh, um uh, you know they say right let the devil eat your lunch and throw the bag so if you allow him he will do it he will you know just enter in and take as much control as is possible but when we enforce our victory then what are we doing you know we are evicting him from this zone okay come on this is this belongs to me i belong to the kingdom of god i am redeemed you cannot touch me you cannot touch my family you cannot touch my finances you can't you know my mind belongs to god so these are all things that we begin to fight with and enforce our victory with because our understanding is quite clear here is a defeated enemy who is doing his best this way or that way to bring destruction so time and again it is my responsibility as a believer to catch him if he has an open door shut the door if he is trying to violate intrude stop him right so when i do that that is when you know i am um uh, taking authority over satan and his demons and uh, um you know while we talk about this there is also a very important thing see uh, we are resisting the devil okay it, it, so that that's what we were saying right now so if he's trying to uh, come in illegally resist the devil james 4:7 okay it says uh, therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so we have to resist the devil but always remember that the resistance comes after submission so which is why i said are there any open doors we check on that so as long as i am submitted to god completely whatever the holy spirit is speaking to my heart i am doing that i am in a good place and then i can resist the devil now unfortunately uh, and we'll talk about this later as well um when we start to resist but you know there are loopholes in our attitude you know towards god it it's not effective against the devil okay uh but yeah the point from this chapter that you have to take with you is we can't let him do what he's doing and that is another reason like you know we minister right we minister many of you are involved in your churches you um, are involved helping pastors for the sunday services for other meetings so what what happens through all this ministry to we are going against the devil who is um you know putting destruction over people's lives in different ways and that's what we are doing as a body of christ we are saying no devil you can't do it so instead you know we speak healing instead we speak deliverance instead you know we speak blessing prosperity over people's lives that's our that's our role as god's people we are here to enforce god's victory in our lives in every area of our life so you would say in my marriage children finances workplace relationships future ministry everything okay 
and others anyone that the lord brings to me i am here to resist the devil to enforce the victory of the cross because you know, we have already seen that satan is crushed expelled condemned disarmed and destroyed so you know we do our part okay and um, uh, the lord jesus he also um, equipped his disciples and he told them to go and do the same works that he did what kind of works did he do you know 1 john 3:8 we know that the son of man was manifest to destroy the works of the devil and here we are disciples what does a disciple do does what the master did and what the master has instructed and uh, very clearly you know even at that time when jesus had his disciples with him during his earthly ministry he sent them out okay he sent them out to go heal uh, <coughs> deliver and do all the mighty works so this is the way in which we recognize the the games of the devil yeah sorry about that and uh, we have to take up position and force our victory okay so uh, this would lead us into the next chapter here which is about maintaining an overcomer's lifestyle we can uh, we we've seen this right so the devil still has time before he is totally stopped from influencing this world but while he is still active we can maintain an immunity against the devil and if he chooses to intrude violate we enforce the victory okay through an overcomer's lifestyle so we are going to discuss that but before that i think i'll just pause and see if you have any comments any questions any thoughts at this point yes yes uh, nicholson please go ahead yeah good morning pastor uh, am i audible yeah, Yeah. very much very so much i i just then um based on what's happening at church um i just had a question like there's this scenario where probably one spouse is a believer and the other is not and one is a strong believer they believe in god's word and they enforce all of this but the other is the other extreme where you know they're still following certain rituals and obviously open doors and uh, that is one scenario where uh, we've not seen any breakthrough actually where it is affecting the family so uh, as per my understanding being even though it's the wife she has the authority to claim the family for christ but there's still not complete deliverance there so that is one question and the other one is similarly there's another recent family who are new believers as well where the daughter as such is under the influence but she's much older so she has her own thinking her own rituals but this family doesn't know how to handle it because she's on her she's off on her own and what like uh, i hope I, i don't know if i'm too clear or not but how does the authority and resisting the devil come into play mm-hmm. there like, because they're yeah. not seeing deliverance okay 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 yeah sure uh, nicholson no you were clear so we've understood the scenario mm, yeah just a moment i want to give you a scripture okay so we have talked about this passage when we did uh, prayer and intercession uh, first corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14 i'll post it for us okay. 
Hmm. So as you can uh, see, it says for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. So from this, the idea we get is, if there is one believing spouse or one believing parent, their spiritual authority is greater than the spiritual influences, you know, whatever spiritual influences that either, you know, that other spouse has or the child. Okay. So having seen this in God's word, I would say, Nicholson, that it's just a matter of time. So though you haven't seen breakthroughs yet, um, you know, continue in prayer, continue in seeking God's wisdom and, um, you know, uh, yeah, just, just hold on and claim, you know, the, the passages of scripture that say that you and your household shall be saved. So if you look at God's word, if there is one believer in the house and in this marriage scenario, there is incredible spiritual influence. Okay, so keep exercising that influence is what I would say. So sure. thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and I know, um, I mean, right now you don't have, it doesn't look like uh, this has, um, this is visible. But uh, yeah, you, you just need to encourage the person to continue praying and continue speaking God's word. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, very, very good uh, question there. So anything else from the others? All right. Um, so anyway, we are all in agreement that uh, Satan tries to influence us, you know, in, in different ways. But, you know, by God's uh, power, his dominion and authority, we can overcome the enemy. So uh, let's study about how you and I can become overcomers, because this is one enemy that we have to face, whether we like it or not. So how can we be in a safe position? Okay, to start with, we'll talk about our position. Okay, uh, and how can we maintain that safe position? So first thing is, us being a believer, in itself gives us, if you want to call it immunity. Okay, immunity doesn't mean that Satan will not try to influence you, but it definitely means that we have some strength against what he does. So when we are in Christ Jesus, we have that uh, immunity. So there are two scriptures given here. Um, yeah, let me let me read. Colossians 3 and verse 1, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So this is Christ's position. And you notice we have also been raised with Christ. Okay, And uh, we've seen earlier that we have been seated with Christ. So when we are in Christ and positioned with him, as we see in Ephesians 2, positioned with him in the heavenlies, you know, uh, the um, right hand of, like we are with Christ, the enemy cannot touch us. Okay? And I've given you that uh, scripture earlier, 1 John 5, um, uh, 1, sorry, yeah, 1 John 5, 18, 
one second, let me just. Yeah, 1 John 5, 18, which says, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. So by virtue of the fact that we are now God's people or God's children, this, the enemy cannot touch us. Okay, So we already have a you know, that, that inner strength or if you want to call it immunity against the uh, evil one. So we have protection. And not just that, when we study Psalm 91, you know, we see that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the psalmist says, you know, he goes on to share how protected he is. Okay, how, <coughs> sorry, covered he is by God's presence. Now, if you go back to the time that man was created in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. It's just this uh, a little long-standing cough uh, that you know I'm trying to uh, deal with. But it's a lot better now. So, huh. Yeah, should be okay. So uh, when ma man was created, I was saying that um, God would come and meet with them. If you if you uh, remember that, it's it's like the presence of God was a constant at that time. Like the psalmist says, Psalm ninety one, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So it was. Like the presence of God was their address. That's where they dwelt, you know, when uh, they were in the garden. And that position of uh, being in the presence of God and being in relationship or communion with God was something very, very special. Okay. And we know that God tried to restore this for us through the Lord Jesus, because mankind had lost it through the fall. But when we go back to that original setting of this presence of God, communion with God, you know, God visiting man and being so close to man, talking to man, the original setting, you know, sometimes you have your gadgets and all, they come with some original setting. So that original setting was that there was a relationship that God established with Adam and Eve. And this was an intimate relationship which involved worship of God. Okay, so they were adoring God, they were honoring God and they were walking with God. So there is a relationship which marks that interaction. There's also submission because for the entire time, except for when Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, they were submitted to the will of God. Okay? Whatever God had told them to do, they were doing it. So there was relationship, there was submission in the original setting. Okay, Then there was also responsibility. Responsibility is God had given them a mandate. And told them that, okay, I put you here. Now I want you to subdue the creatures of the earth. And also I want you to be fruitful, multiply, you know, have dominion over uh, the earth, so on and so forth. So he gave them responsibility in that sense. And we also know that, you know, he gave them, uh, he wanted them to tend the garden. So Originally, God gave them a, a, a sort of a fulfilling life where there was something for them to do, something for them to accomplish and enjoy. So uh, that's how God made them. Then God also gave them dominion. So they had the authority to care for everything in the garden. 
they had the dominion to protect the garden which means that if at all there was an intrusion they must stand up for it you know was satan around at that time yeah you know he is a creature he was created way before so he very much was existent at that time and you know god in his uh, understanding knew that the garden needs protection okay so it was the responsibility of adam and eve to walk in the dominion that god gave them so all of this was how god originally intended for them to live and as long as they maintained relationship submission took on the responsibility which they had from god and exercised their dominion they were okay so nothing really went wrong so in other words <clears throat> you know we can look at their lives and we can see that uh, okay at that time what did we discuss we said okay we must speak god's word we must renew our minds you know we have all the other weapons of warfare which we will study about the name of jesus the blood of jesus all of those things but in the garden these people were able to have a safe and a fulfilling life just by virtue of these four things maintaining their relationship with god maintaining their submission to god maintaining the responsibility and the dominion that god had given them so learning from this what we are saying is one is we recognize that now we are in christ jesus now we are seated with christ in the heavenly places so our position has changed so knowing it god's people perish for lack of knowledge so we know and we can use that and also when we live in the presence of god in this way like adam and eve lived that is also a place of security he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will abide under the shadow of the almighty okay so a shadow is like a covering <clears throat> just through these things we end up having a covering you know by maintaining our relationship with god by developing our relation intimate relationship with god uh, and uh, also you know our uh, submission to god and knowing our identity okay i have dominion i have authority all these things so uh would just like to encourage to keep this up and that in itself is like a weapon against satan okay now the next thing that is important in and in our lifestyle one is we are maintaining the strong relationship with god we are aware that we are in christ jesus next <laughs> holiness and consecration is very important Okay, what is consecration? Consecration is being set apart. You remember, uh, for this whole deliverance topic, we said that any object which is consecrated, or in other words, we can use the term dedicated. Okay, dedicated to demons, it becomes a channel, or it becomes a vessel. of expression of that you know that kingdom so if it is dedicated to demonic entities we would say okay that particular object was consecrated to demons and demons start expressing themselves through it similarly when something is dedicated to god or let's put it this way talking about people when we are dedicated to god or consecrated set apart for god what can you expect you and i become channels of expression of the holy spirit okay so to become a channel of expression and you know part of that expression is overcoming victory okay uh, overthrowing the devil enforcing you know our victory all of that now how to do this we have to dedicate and 
you know a, you know how 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 do i put this holiness meaning we we decide that my life is for god okay my gifts are for god and the whole list whatever i told earlier you know my family is for god my finances are for god uh, my possessions are for god you know my children are for god mm, uh, things like that you know you 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 dedicate you consecrate you sanctify everything that belongs to you and one is we make that dedication and then we walk in submission or in obedience to god okay so earlier i brought up this verse from james 4:7 submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so before resisting the devil if i maintain a lifestyle of submitting to god then what happens i am in a good position i am protected and uh, satan will do his part you know if he gets an easy access he would love that but through these three things that i first shared we are not giving him any easy access we are covered we are protected and uh, you know we are in a place of immunity so if we want the enemy out then we better maintain a lifestyle like this but if we choose to uh, you know play around with god and also say no no it's okay uh, you know I, i i i want god's protection but you know i don't want to also fully be obedient to god you know it will not work and which is why particularly when it comes to facing the devil facing satan the main thing is my submission to god the more i am submitted to god the enemy cannot look me in the eye he'll be like okay i better leave this place you know uh, and that's what remember jesus also said satan has nothing in me because he was fully submitted to the father and that is what is required of us so can we walk in obedience can we walk in submission and holiness before the lord and you know you also in uh, uh, james 4 6 and 7 um, uh, you you see actually, actually in 6 uh, i think yeah it talks about um, god giving grace to the humble and then 7 is where you read submit to god resist the devil so being submitted to god or, or you know being humble before the god before god is when we receive our empowering god gives more grace he gives more grace to whom to the proud no he in fact resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble or the submitted to god's leading and god's guidance so uh, let's put it this way to the extent he reigns in me he can also reign through me so we must allow god to rule and reign in our lives and that's the best way of living a life of an overcomer against satan okay so let's take a break now we'll come back and we will look at a couple of other things that will protect us against satan okay so 10 minutes Uh, let's come back at uh, 11 o'clock thank you